Make no mistake, Marcus May is no Jamal Adams. Especially at the strong safety position, losing Jamal is a huge blow to the Jets' defense. But if anyone has a shot to replace the man, at least to the best possible degree, it is May. His versatility is about to be unleashed. Part of what makes a good free safety a good free safety and run support is knowing when to be aggressive and knowing when to play it safe. Dallas shifts and will run it from the top here. There's May up top. Adams is in a hook seam kind of position. And let's run it through and see what happens. Pool, kick out. Right here, Jets are in serious trouble. And May recognizes it. He doesn't attack, which he loves to do. Plays it patiently, waits for the troops to arrive, makes the tackle as he avoids the pulling lineman. Now, right off the bat, Dallas is in, a, in the advantage because it's 12 personnel and there's Brian Poole on the field. Nickel against 12 personnel. Greg Williams is light here. Dallas shifts. Advantage number two. Adams is on the weak side. Because they're a nickel, it's tougher to put Adams on the strong side. Poole is going to play edge DB run support. There's Adams on the right. There's Poole on the left, on the strong side, on the field side. So it's it's a great shot to take here. Two pulling linemen. The corner has to run with the end around motion. Phillips highlighted, crashes hard. Kick out on Poole. Like to see Poole squeeze it more, but he's a corner. What are you going to do? Cashman is getting walled off there seriously walled off and with a lineman coming straight at may marcus may who is used to playing from an inside out run support position as a single high safety is gonna have to play this very differently he has no one to his left to the strong side it's him and that's it so he has to play it from an outside in perspective make sure Zeke doesn't get outside and also make sure he doesn't get taken out right there backs up trades yards for a big play makes an athletic tackle Cashman finally gets there to help him out that's just brilliant smarts from the free safety Marcus May spoke to the media today and made it clear he feels like he can play in the box he can be a versatile safety play low and remember he did two games last year when Adams and Poole were both out, and now it's killer because Poole is like a strong safety, May played low, Daryl Roberts played high. Marcus May highlighted. Nice job in real time from the sideline view. Now we'll really get into it over top here. May on the left side, you'll see him number 20. Lined up over the tight end, responsible for the tight end. Trips on the other side. So he's got to be aware of that. He's got the C. He's got to read the tackle and the guard here. Down, pull, edge left for the kick out. He could read it quicker and charge, but at the same time, he's responsible for the tight end. Tight end comes at him. Could still be a route. Although it's unlikely because of the two pulling linemen. It's unlikely that it's play action. Tough to diagnose and see that. But he's got to recognize it. Is it a route or is he breaking down? Tight end's breaking down. From here, I'd like to see him punch it, squeeze it, right arm. He doesn't. He kind of avoids it, and that's a big thing for guys in the box. Great job with the hands here. They're not used to squeezing and punching and playing aggressively. With more reps, he can do it. But from here, May does a great job. Once he avoids the block, disengages, gets around the tight end. He squeezes that edge responsibility. Inside shoulder, perfect. Textbook in that situation on the tackle. Great tackle, great run support. May can do it, just needs more reps. Third and two, Miami. This play represents something that May will have to work on moving forward. The big drastic difference between May at strong and Jamal Adams at strong safety is the physicality. The willingness to punch and move the blocker. Third and two. We'll watch it from the top first. There's May at the top, boundary side. 
Sword moves the blocker. Can't really see exactly what happened. Flag thrown. Watch it one more time. Kinda secures the edge, but we'll get a better idea from the end zone view. There he is right here. And this is a run fit uh, look here where short yardage, the strong safety has to get in the mix, punch and move guys, and really secure his responsibility. And his responsibility here, along with Jordan Jenkins, is to fit into the D-gap, make sure nothing gets outside of him in between those two tight ends, those twin tight ends. Everything moves to the boundary side on the, the mid to outside zone. May, right here, does he move the tight end at all? Little bit, little bit. But this is the best example or one of the better examples from him playing strong safety the last two games or those two games last year that we're going to find right now. This is the one area he really has to pick up on. Can he do it? I think he can get better at it with a lot more experience and more reps. I don't like exactly what Hewitt did here because Hewitt could have done this. You know, Hewitt needed to punch a little bit more too. And Foley gets moved a little too much for my liking. McClendon just beasts it and takes care of the play. But... This will be something to watch for with Marcus May moving forward. Don't be confused. May, although he'll start low and will take on the SS position, will play high as well. There's no question about it. First and 10 here. Jets still with a seven point lead. And you'll see May here react like he normally does high. Boom. Nice tackle. Marcus May is an excellent open field tackler, especially from starting high, where the Jets go with a two deep look against Fitzpatrick. And interestingly, they get caught here, which Greg Williams, I shouldn't say they get caught. Greg Williams doesn't mind at times throwing a nickel out there against uh, a 12 personnel or anything that's not 11 personnel. He doesn't mind. Why? Because he had Jamal Adams, because he has Brian Poole, because he has Marcus May, these good tackling DBs who all can play strong safety. The problem is Jamal Adams and Brian Poole are out in this game. So here's May. You watch Hairston here in the slot inside, which Greg Williams loves, and he's taught to read the run with the DBs. If they read run, Greg Williams teaches them to go. Don't hesitate. Go, go. And it's only in certain situations where he teaches it where they can't get burned. Henry Anderson crashes, so things get a little hairy here. Henry Anderson crashes. Burgess is trying to react through the A or B gap. Neville Hewitt's playing it the right way. There's Hairston. Reacts, tries to make a play. I mean, it wasn't a crack call, but the, the movement is turns out to be a crack block. Hairston, Burgess, miss, miss, both miss. But they stop him a little bit, and then May is there to clean it up. So without May, things would get a little hairy there. Hewitt also sheds the block very nicely. Good job by Hewitt. Watch it in real speed. There's May. Henry Anderson crash. Hairston, Burgess. Hewitt gets, gets off. May makes the tackle. Marcus May, man coverage. Played strong safety against Miami and Baltimore last year. Here's Miami, third and five. Near the goal line, red zone, Jets up six, six minutes left in the first half. You'll see May right here. Come across the formation, follow the tight end. Man coverage, expects the box out, gets it. Great job with the inside arm. Doesn't swat, just looks to feel. Match ball with eye, with hand. And hey, if the tight end makes the catch here, you tip your cap and move on. Great coverage. Has a start. Tight end, motion. May follows him. 3-3-5, three, three, Burgess up here. Jenkins down there. Burgess is going to wind up taking the running back who comes out. Rule probably would have applied on the boundary side with Jenkins, but they put Burgess on the strong side, uh, on the running back side, to make sure and hope that Jenkins can rush the passer. Daryl Roberts, free safety, press everywhere. Watch what Daryl Roberts does at the snap. Immediately inside, on the slot, Helping out there, which leaves May 
all by himself on the tight end. It's not Revis Island, but still, you got to have faith in your safety to do this with the free safety. May, inside position, maintains that inside leverage for most of the play. If Gasecki decides to go slant, plant hard with the right foot, May should probably still be fine. His hips are pretty flat, square. Two hands, contact right here, nothing wrong with that. Fitzpatrick still has the ball. Still with the contact, good job, maintains position. He did this in the Dallas game as well. And from here, if Gasecki makes the catch, you tip your cap. But he doesn't. May, great job with the man coverage. And Greg Williams is going to ask him to do this a lot this year. And he successfully gets it done here. Man coverage, Marcus May can do it, folks. Second and eight, Buffalo. Jets up by seven, start of the second half. We'll run it through here. Base 12 personnel for the Bills, two tight ends. There's May. Single high, off on top, hard down low. May blanketing the tight end. Not much to the play except May's technique, where he wants to be, where he wants the tight end to go. Look at how far inside he is. I mean, that's not just a little shade. That is incredibly inside. He's expecting something in. He's expecting something to the inside. Weights, squats. There's the hop from Kaseki. May cuts him off, impedes his progress, makes contact after five yards, which is fine. As a DB, you want to make contact, and if it's minimal, you are fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the way to play DB in today's league. That looks to kill the DB at every turn. Gaseki hop. He is not threatened by an outside move whatsoever. I don't like Gaseki's route here, but May beats him to the punch, and it's not even close. It's like an NBA defender ready to take on the charge. Impedes right there. He has no clear shot on the in cut and sticks with him the entire way. Right now, stays over the top. If Fitzpatrick decides to go for him, May will engage just a little closer, right hand on the hip. And if Fitzpatrick dares to make that throw across his body, May will come with the right hand, inside arm, to knock it away. But brilliant coverage by May, the guy who's going to be playing a lot of strong safety this year. And he has the tools to do it. He just needs the reps. He just needs the experience. Here he is up top. Really inside. Boom. Perfect blanketed coverage. Forget what you know about zone coverage, man coverage. Throw it out of the window. It's, it's match principles, match pattern matching these days, and, and that's the way football is. That's the way coverages go. Here against the Dolphins, May, another strong trait of his is communication. Communication while working with everyone else. There's May. There's Harrison. Okay. Happened quickly. It's not a stack. You know, it's basic trips with a tight end. Uh, look, looking like a 3-3-5 nickel against 11 personnel. There's May. There's Hairston. These two are working in concert. This is, this is something Greg Williams loves to do to try to bait the quarterback into an underneath mistake. Hairston, watch him make the under call. Right there. And he makes it pretty quickly. May hears it. Gone. If Fitzpatrick threw it to this receiver, May has a chance to do his high step in prime time. Chris Berman dance to the end zone for a pick six. He doesn't. He Fitzpatrick makes a nice decision on the outside, gets a first down. But here, I'm assuming May has first in, second out. And Hairston has um, first out, second in, which means if both guys do an out... Harrison's going to have the first out. May's going to have the second out. If both guys do an in, May's going to have the first in. Harrison's going to have the second in. And what happens is the number two right here does an in, and that's May because he's got first in. The number three 
keeps going down the field, and Hairston drops. So it's excellent communication between these two. And May is a great quarterback in the defensive backfield to get that done. Fitzpatrick completes the pass, but it's not on May and Hairston. They do their job in terms of communicating, in terms of pattern reading, and Greg Williams has to love this from an execution standpoint. Greg Williams' plan looks to be crystallizing. McDougald high, May low. That doesn't mean May won't play high. He'll play too deep. He might play single high at times, but this guy is the strong safety. And with more reps and experience, he could do damage.